Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Mobile App Academy. This is our live building series where we show you how to build and configure mobile apps on the Now platform. My name is David Ha, and I'm an outbound product manager here at ServiceNow, and I'll be your host for today's session. And also want to give you a warm welcome for uh, joining us live here today. Um, if you are joining us for the first time, welcome. Uh, we have product experts here to provide guidance, best practices, and answer any questions that come up along the way. And we do host these academies every two weeks at 10 a.m. Pacific, uh, in which our recordings will also be posted to YouTube on the ServiceNow Now community channel. Uh, just want to point out a few resources that we do have available, uh, although I do notice that some of these screenshots are a bit outdated. Uh, we did go through a new community revamp. Um, it's now now has a completely new UI. Um, this is our first initial launch, and there's still quite a few things that we are organizing, um, especially for our mobile community. Um, so just hold on tight with us. Uh, we will get a lot of these things updated. Um, you might, um, uh, if you have any feedback with us, definitely feel free to share with, uh, share with us. Um, but uh, you can find our, um, uh, I, I wanna point out a few other academies that are available, um, such as our, HR Service Delivery Academy, Platform Foundation, Platform Analytics, um, Virtual Agent, and so many others. Um, and you can find these series in their respective community forums. Okay. Uh, just to quickly review for today's schedule, this will be a very quick 20 minute session. Um, we're gonna start off with a quick overview. Uh, you know, what are our goals for today? What we're gonna implement and how to get started. And then we'll jump into the exercise. Um, we're gonna cover an enhancement that came into San Diego for input form screens, um, specifically so that you can autofill inputs using a script include. Um, and then we'll open up to some Q&A uh, if you have any questions at the end. Um, one other thing I wanna mention is uh, if you're looking for more hands-on training, uh, I do recommend that you check out our now learning course that's called Mobile Use Baseline Functions. Um, and some of our other earlier academies as well. Um, if you're not quite up to speed on today's topic, you, you can watch our Getting Started with Input Form Screens Academy, which you can find on the community or on YouTube. Um, and these are great resources to get started, um, learning how to use input form screens, why they're important, and how to build your functions. Okay, so definitely check those out if you haven't already. But with that being said, let's now jump into our overview for autofilling inputs using input form screens. Um, so input form screens, just a reminder that this is what we use to build actions for our users, right? It's a more streamlined experience for users to enter in their data. And we released a new enhancement in San Diego that actually allows us to support a lot of new use cases, um, things that we couldn't uh, been able to do before such as autofilling variables using a script include. So you can now do things like um, auto-populate a field that's based on the uh, logged in user's profile, which you can kind of see an example in the screenshot here. Um, you can see that the building value was auto-filled so that it's one less field for the user to fill out as they're creating their um, reservation uh, for a conference room, right? Uh, and for today's session, we're gonna use the field service technician use case as an example. We're gonna leverage the work order workflow. It's an out of the box workflow from the field service mobile app. And so as technicians are starting to work on their tasks, you know, they're required to fill, uh, log in their hours and figure out what parts they need to complete their task. And to help with this flow, we're going to enhance their existing input form screens uh, so that it autofills the last part that was used on the task so that information is readily available for them as they log in their hours. Um, and of course, this can be applied to any use case. If there's any fields that you feel like it's uh, re repetitive or there are fields that can be easily autofilled, then um, it's definitely a, a great use case to apply to any of your input form screens. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, just a quick note that we did record this into a short 10 minute implementation video. Uh, to take us through this. So let me go and pull that up really quick. I'll now start the recording. Hi, everyone. I'm Ian Kinnear from the Outbound Enablement team. And in this session, I'd like to walk through setting up a scripted parameter form variable. 
This is something you can use to auto-populate an input on your parameter screen based on the execution of a function in a server-side script include. For this use case, I'm going to be leveraging the record time function, which comes packaged as part of the field service mobile plugin. The function allows a technician to record time spent on a work order task. Our use case will be to display the last part used as part of this task at the top of the record time input screen so that the technician has that information readily available as they log their time. So first, let's open up our mobile app builder. We'll select the field service mobile scope. And then click on functions to access our functions. We're gonna to wanna to find that record time function. The one we want is record time parameter screen. And from here, we can see the layout of our function. We've got an action item and an input form screen together with some inputs and input attributes. In order to add a new input, we'll click on the record time input form screen, scroll down, take a look at our inputs here, and click new. We're gonna make an input called last part used. We'll give it a label. You can give it a nice description and we'll select the input type of string and it'll be read only. We'll give it an order of one just to put it right at the top of the screen. For the autofill variable, obviously that's what we're here to do. We haven't created it yet, so we can't select it here. We'll just go ahead and click save. Now in order to create that autofill variable, at the time of the recording of this video in March 2022, we can't create that type of variable yet in Mobile App Builder, but we can just flip over to our platform view and do that. So what we'll do is we'll use this overflow menu here um, to uh, from the record time input form screen and open up in platform. So here's that same input form screen, just from the platform view. We can see all of our inputs here, including the one that we just added. And we'll click back here under variables and add a new variable, which we'll call last part used autofill. And this one will have a variable type down here at the bottom of scripted. We'll save that and then click into that variable in order to add a variable attribute. This variable attribute needs to have the name of script with a capital S. And for the value, this is where we're gonna give it the syntax to get to the script include and function that we're gonna use to return back that string. So let's take a look at what it looks like here. It's standard syntax to invoke a function from a script include. It will be new and then the scope, in this case SNFSM mobile dot scripted autofill. So this scripted autofill will be the name of the script include that we're going to create. Open bracket, close bracket dot get last used part. That's going to be the function that we'll go ahead and create open bracket, close bracket. So with this, we can save this. And we'll go ahead now and create that script include. So the logic can run. So we'll click into our script include list, click on new. So here, to match what we had in our variable attribute, it's gonna be scripted autofill. We can click out of there for to see it will auto populate the full name with the scope for us and start to create our function or script for us. Um, in the script, we're gonna need that get last part used function. In order to create that, just click in here 
give it the function name, and we'll create the skeleton of that function. Now for the next part, I won't make you wait for me to type the whole thing. We'll just include this in the description of the lab. Um, but if we click over here, paste this in, we can review the logic of what this, is, this script include function is going to return back. So all we're doing here is we're going to open up a new glide record against the SM asset usage table. That's the table that the part usages will be found in. We're going to add an encoded query where we're going to pass the current dot sysid for the service order, order task. So that's the work order task sysid that it's going to be able to grab from the context of the record that our mobile function is tied to. And we're going to uh, also filter it for to give us only those um, part usages that are used. On the next line, you see this order by dis descending. That's going to just allow us to grab order them by descending updated order so that we can grab only our most recent one. And on line nine, you can see the query being invoked on line 10. So if we return, if that query returns a record, a row, we'll go ahead and retrieve it with next. And then here's where we're going to return back our value. So this is just going to pull for us the asset on that records display value, get display value. And we just add it on here um, to the second part here, building out our string, the date time that that record was updated on. And so you can see, you can, whatever you need to build out in your script, you can, you know, start to see the possibilities and build whatever you need to. So this is really all we, we need for this uh, function. If it doesn't return any record, it's just going to return blank. So we can go ahead and save this. We have one more piece to do before we can leverage this scripted autofill variable in our mobile app, which is to go back to our mobile app builder tab. And we'll just refresh this view just to make sure that we have that variable available. And we'll find our last part used input that created we created earlier. Scroll down to our autofill variable. And now we're going to go ahead and point it, add our last part used autofill variable that we created. Click Save. At this point, looking over at our mobile app, we can find a function. You should obviously have a function where you've, um, you know, you've used a part. Um, so we can just tap back and refresh this just to make sure it's updated. Tap into the task. And then we'll access our overflow menu up here to find the record time function. Tap it. And we can see our last part used read only input here and we've passed in the name of the asset that was used and the date and time when it was used. So the technician can see that as they're recording their time. Thanks very much. So that was a very quick, quick bite of um, how you can take advantage of some of these uh, scripted autofill variables for your input form screens. Um, we are seeing a lot of questions around input form strings, so we wanted to continue doing more app academies and topics around this. Um, so you might see uh, more future topics um, such as um, uh, dependent, dependent input IDs, um, how to apply advanced uh, reference qualifiers, um, and so these are other topics that we might explore in the future. Uh, any questions in the chat before we kind of wrap up for today? Make sure to subscribe to the new mobile community form. Uh, register to our mobile app academy series. Uh, that way you can still continue getting notifications on our latest updates. But with that be, uh, all being said, thank you all for joining us today. And we hope to see you again in two weeks at our next academy. Thanks, everyone.